This portrait is of Feliz Yisokoi, who is a professor of biomedical engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I had a chance to talk with Feliz about her life and research, and I'm sharing some of our conversation here. Tell me about your research, Phyllis. My research is focused around the interaction of light with nanostructured materials. Traditionally, light was manipulated using lens, polarizers, mirrors. But in the very recent years, in the past 20 years, humanity learned how to control material in the nanoscale. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. we have new tools where we can structure materials with extremely precise control at the nanoscale. And nowadays, people are trying to make, for example, lenses, like metal surface based lenses, instead of using these bulky materials to make lenses. Now we can use only 100 nanometer thick materials, mm -hmm. and we just make certain patterns that are repeating on a right. substrate. And when light passes through it, you can polarize it circularly, linearly, you can focus it. Any kind of interaction is pretty much possible. And how does the biomedical aspect fit in? So this was really appealing to me. Part of my PhD was around this. Mm -hmm. And then during my postdoc, I was exposed to more biosciences. There, there's a very interesting area where we can actually use light and these nanoengineered substrates to detect biomolecules. Mm -hmm. There is a growing new area of nanobiosensors or nanophotonic biosensors. Yeah. So these are very interesting because we have a lot of light sources and detectors everywhere. Why don't we bring together this nanotechnology to make biosensors that can be used anywhere? in your phone, mm -hmm. at home, or in rural areas where the traditional medical laboratories are not present. So that is one of my main research directions, democratizing the use of light and nanotechnology for developing low-cost, rapid, and accessible biosensing technologies. That sounds like really amazing work. And what happened during the pandemic is People, I mean, we were trying, we are talking, we are developing this technology, we go present, write papers, but you know, people are like, yeah, but I go to hospital and then I get mm. my test results, right? Yeah. No, no one was really realizing the importance of disseminated biosensors. And now... Oh. <laughs> now you can't really, go to the hospital to get checked now, up. No, I mean, even if the, the hospitals were overwhelmed in New York, oh. when the case numbers increased, people were waiting weeks to get their test results. So the idea is developing biosensors that will not be only used in the hospitals or clinics, hmm. but just by ordinary people, like glucose sensors that are used by diabetic people. That's great. So outside of your research, what creative outlets do you enjoy? Yeah, for me, it's outdoors. I love hiking. I love just long, long walks or run. If I don't do it, I go crazy. I like observing nature. Mm -hmm. It just tells me that nature knows the best and we are just trying to match what it can do. And if we actually look very carefully, it gives us all the little hints to understand our directions. For example, nature knows how to use nanotechnology. Look at butterflies, wings, all these like blue color was produced with the interaction of light at nano. So nature did it long before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're learning from nature. It's not the other way around. So can you talk about how you got into science and some of your experiences leading up to where you are now? So I was lucky to be born in a family where I never felt that I was a girl and I shouldn't do science. Mm -hmm. Like that realization only came to me when I left home. <laughs> and I'm coming from, you know, my parents never went to college, but for them, it was like extremely important to give the education that they couldn't get themselves mm -hmm. to their kids. So for in my family, education was highly valued. And I think my parents did some magic there because I'm coming from Turkey and Turkey is an 
it's a secular country back in my days it was more secular than it is today mm -hmm. but still the majority of the country doesn't really value women's education the support of the family they supported my interest in chemistry and physics i was really fascinated by the field so the math was for me a tool to understand mm -hmm. physics i didn't like just meaninglessly solving equations or just doing well in math but when i use those equations to solve a physical problem where i can visualize in my mm -hmm. head that was just so so much fun i enjoyed it yeah. a lot yeah, when you I study things on the book then you get your grade you move on you forget but you never forget when you measure acceleration of a particle falling from somewhere yeah you know that is there yeah. the more you learn the more you realize there's this culture these like the first scientists develop interest in nature and then they found out the first mm -hmm. theories yeah so tell me more about your childhood and education in turkey you know what happens in turkey we have exams that is public exams and when you take those exams and if you do well then the system directs you towards technical high schools. In one of these exams, I did extremely well, and I managed to get into the first 100 students in the mm -hmm. whole country. And it was like a, maybe a million people would take the exam. And then I managed to get into the very successful science high school. Mm -hmm. We didn't get any, you know, literature, art classes. The whole mm -hmm. curriculum was just pure science like hours of math, chemistry, physics, biology, and some physical education to get us active. Mm -hmm. So these three years of intense scientific education gave me the background. When I actually went to college, I was two years ahead of regular people who came from regular high school because yeah. you know that high school was extremely intense. So what advice do you have for aspiring scientists, especially young girls interested in science? So overall, I have to say I was lucky because no one told me that you're a girl, you cannot do this. On the contrary, mm -hmm. my parents were like, you're a girl, you need to be better than the, the guys because the <laughs> system already supports them. Yeah, so you have yeah. to be better than them to actually make your own niche in life. Mm -hmm. Only later, I realized the burden I had. As a girl, I had to do better. I couldn't get a bad grade because that would prove that I'm a girl and I cannot do science, Yeah. right? I, I put so much pressure on myself to prove myself that I'm a girl and I can still do science. Mm -hmm. I didn't give myself any room for any failure in life. I didn't really get the chance to see like, okay, what I want, what should I do? Choose my own path. Rather, it was more like a competition of like, <laughs> I can also do well. <laughs> yeah. And look, I'm also like you. So the major message I give these days to young girls is if you want to do science, do it your own way. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be like boys. Because this concept of boys associated with doing well in science, yeah. it is very limiting. Yeah, that's really good advice. So, as my last question, where do you hope to see your research in 10 years? What directions do you think it will take? My research direction is giving people cell phone-like tools. They would have a little box that everyone would have in their bathrooms, drop a drop of blood, every morning or a toilet where it measures, looks at your urine and tells you that things are not looking good. Mm -hmm. Do something about it because right now we only go to see a doctor when we have a pain, when we have a symptom. And a yeah. lot of the time it's too late, especially for cancer, Yeah. right? The symptoms only start when you are at the late stages. And imagine if it was so accessible, so cheap that like a hairdryer or phone, everyone would have it at home mm -hmm. and a constant health screening would expand the human life and would have a lot of health outcomes. So that's the dream. <laughs> that, that sounds like a really good vision. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Liz.
Well, thank this you so much for choosing me. It was a great pleasure to talk to you.